are you doing today? Just great. It's a little uh, frenzied, but we're doing okay. You were mentioned in Satoshi's white papers. How does it feel to be uh, remembered for generations to come? Well, that's a very flattering way of putting it. I guess my real focus to answer the long-term question is uh, as long as my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren remember me, that will be just, just fine. But it is true about the Bitcoin paper. Uh, there are eight footnotes in the Bitcoin paper. Four of them referenced myself and Dr. Haber's work. And so we obviously had some role to play in the early stages of getting this thing going. And that's kind of exciting. It is. Uh, what's your favorite application uh, of blockchain? Oh, there's a lot that I could pick from, but um, I'm very excited about what we're seeing in terms of things that can help establish uh, better voting records, uh, better identity, particularly for th in third world settings. Um, obviously, there's tremendous innovation going on in financial services. As someone that used to run a couple of venture-backed firms, it's nice to see venture capitalists having some competition when it comes to ICOs. Um, so those are among the things that uh, I guess I should throw out a shout out as well. I, I really like uh, what Steemit is trying to do with creating incentives for people's contribution as a way of doing what they call subjective proof of work. I think there's a lot of uh, interesting possibilities there. There's a lot more that I could name. What do you think about the uh, relationship between AI and the DLT? Are we, um, do you think we are, could approach an uh, AI singularity? Ah, the AI singularity. Well, one thing that many people do not know is that before I worked in the blockchain space, I actually, my dissertation is largely in uh, artificial intelligence. And so I think there's great opportunities there. They have to be chosen correctly, but as to the AI singularity, I, I, I don't lose sleep about uh, reaching a singularity point. I think humans are here for the long haul. Some people note that the internet has three phases. Uh, we are now approaching phase three. Um, what's your thought about this? You know, I think we're going to see successive waves of revolution. A lot of people want me to naturally say that blockchain is going to change everything and it will be the all important thing. But I really don't see it that way, not because blockchain is not important, but because after each successive wave, that just becomes a layer that we all then build on top of. And I think just like we all treat YouTube as something that we can all post to and gain a broadcast medium, we're going to treat the blockchain like just another given that we'll be able to take advantage of as we build something even better on top of that. So what's really going on is for the first time in human history, we are all fully connected. And second, we have massive amounts of computing power at our disposal. In a sense, the blockchain is simply another wave as a consequence of that connectivity and the ability to use mathematical protocols that run on computers to create networks of trust. So I think you're going to just see wave after wave after wave, not the blockchain becoming less important, but because it will become so universally applicable that it will just sort of sink and become another layer that people don't even think about. What's your take on Malta becoming a hub for blockchain technology? I think they've taken a tremendous lead here and I, my hat goes off to all the people that I've met that have been involved in the process. They really want to embrace what's good about this, regulate it in, in a light touch way so that things that our uh, less desirable consequences can be minimized, but the fact that rather than be afraid of it, the fact that they're embracing it and trying to create a safe uh, for doing business culture here is a tremendous thing, and I think they're off to a great start.